I, I, it's going to be a very hard thing to concede because we know there was massive fraud. So as to whether or not I can get this apparatus moving this quickly, because time isn't on our side. Everything else is on our side. Facts are on our side. This was a massive fraud. This should never take place in this country. We're like a third world country. Just to be clear, if the Electoral College votes for Joe Biden, will you concede? Well, if they do, they made a mistake. Because this election was a fraud. Just so you understand, this election was a fraud. I mean, they had Biden beating Obama on Obama's vote in areas that mattered in terms of the election, in swing states. And yet he's losing to Obama all over the place. But he's beating Obama in swing states, which are the states that mattered for purposes of the election. So, no, I can't say that at all. I think it's a, it's a possibility. They're trying to, look, between you people, don't, answer, don't talk to me that way. You're just, a, you're just a lightweight. Don't talk to me that way. Don't talk to, I'm the President of the United States. Don't ever talk to the President that way. All right, I'm going to go with another question. Go ahead. So if, if the Electoral College does elect President-elect Joe Biden, are you not going to leave this building? Just so you, oh, certainly I will. Certainly I will. And you know that. But I think that there will be a lot of things happening between now and the 20th of January. A lot of things. Massive fraud has been found. We're like a third world country. You know that it's tradition for previous presidents to go to the next president's inauguration. So will you attend your... I don't want to say that yet. I mean, I know the answer. I, I'll be honest, I know the answer. But I just don't want to say it yet. Look, a thing like this possibly has never happened before, but maybe people just didn't catch it. But we've caught it. We've caught, we've caught hundreds of thousands of votes. L listen, excuse me, excuse me. When they don't allow a poll watcher, which is a sacred person in our country. People don't know what a poll watcher is. A poll watcher is it's considered sacred in our country. When they throw them out of rooms, but that's not true. They didn't do sure that. it is. And when they put them in pens, excuse me, no they didn't, my attorneys did not admit anything. So there we have it. President Trump's first uh, sort of interaction at any sort of deep uh, and or methodical level uh, essentially post presidential election where of course now Joe Biden has become uh, president elect and since of course Biden has been claimed as to be the president elect Trump has essentially refused to accept the results and has even sort of reveled in various conspiracy theories even within the context of that sort of exchange that he had there you see him still pointing to fraud and or a sort of rigged election but not necessarily pointing to any sort of specific and or substantiative uh, propositions and or substance and or evidence and or facts that can support his claims and this of course has been routine since he's lost of course uh, this has included sort of various legal efforts in attempt to somehow some way overturn the results but for the most part has been uh, unsuccessful in doing so however earlier this week we had uh, the general services administration informed biden that the trump administration is ready to begin the formal transition process which of course leaves us with a couple of questions either that trump has accepted the results within the confines of uh, his psyche or he was sort of or has been sort of persuaded to accept the results and now engage in a peaceful transition of power however when the GSA marked the first step that the administration has taken to acknowledge uh, Trump's defeat and the transition process will essentially occur moments after 
Trump, of course, went on Twitter and said, and I quote, Our case strongly continues. We will keep up the good fight, and I believe we will prevail. So you see a balance of the two there. On the one hand, he's still in sort of denial. But as you see there within the confines of the press conference, he's also accepting in the sense that he outlines that, uh, of course, he will leave the White House during uh, the inauguration proceedings or, of course, until we get to January. Now, there's been this sort of... Uh, vision that maybe Trump may not leave the White House and he may be forcefully, of course, told to leave. But I'm going to go on the premise that uh, he fully well knows that he has lost. Of course, even Fox News has, uh, or certain Fox News outlets have confirmed that loss. And to say otherwise would... Uh, correspond in living in a sort of fictional existence that's not based on any sort of reality. But what's crucial there is uh, when he was asked whether he will attend Biden's inauguration ceremony, he could say that he has the answer, but he didn't want to give the answer. Now, I personally think He's going to take this stand from here on out in the sense that the election was rigged, but we can't really do anything about it now. So therefore, I'm sort of forced and or compelled to engage in a peaceful transition of power, which will sort of try to appease both sides, both his base as well as the democratic process. Now, it'll be interesting furthermore to see what other conspiracy theories he may or may not come up with because he also makes the note there that we'll see as we get to January. But as of right now, it looks like he is going to accept uh, engaging in Maybe not the most peaceful, but at least a transition nonetheless. So there we have it, Trump's uh, first press conference post-loss during uh, the presidential election.